Hey, how's it going? Tonight, I'm gonna be processing this image I took of the Andromeda Galaxy. This was four and a half hours of exposure. This was taken with a Sony A6400 mirrorless camera, a Sony 200-600 millimeter lens at 450 millimeters, and a uh, Star Adventure 2i uh, tracking mount with auto guiding. So, let's get started, shall we? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a uh, auto stretch on it just to see how things look. Let me just make this a little bigger. All right. So, I'm gonna do some color calibration first. So I'm gonna zoom in to a spot where there is no stars. So like right here would be good. And I'm just gonna select that. And then I'm gonna open up SPCC. Our region of interest is gonna be that preview that we just did with the area with no stars. And then we're just gonna run that. All right, so that's all done. We can uh, close our preview and kill our auto stretch. And then I'm going to open up screen transfer function and histogram. And we're going to do a proper uh, auto stretch on it. And then we're going to apply that to the histogram and then apply it to the image. And then kill the stretch. So now our image is permanently stretched. Alright, so now I'm just going to rotate the image. We don't need the astrometric solution anymore, so it's okay if we lose that. And I'm just going to rotate it counterclockwise again. And there we go. Alright. So it's not perfectly centered, but that's fine. So we might as well just crop it now. So we'll bring that up to about there. Bring that in here. Bring that in there and then just center it up a little all right right on so this already looks pretty good but we can get it far better than that trust me so I'm gonna save this as a tiff and I'm gonna open it up in Photoshop here all right so I've got it open in Photoshop and I'm gonna lasso around the galaxy and then I'm gonna lasso around the satellite galaxy here and I'm gonna inverse and I'm gonna run gradient exterminator on this all right cool so the other thing I'm gonna do while I'm in Photoshop is I'm gonna remove the color noise so you can see this like rainbowish kind of pattern in here that's just color noise so I'm just gonna turn up the color noise reduction to 25 and that will remove the color noise all right so we can save that open that up in pics insight again and next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the stars with star exterminator so let's run that and get the stars and galaxy separated all right star exterminators done we got the galaxy and the stars separated so I'm gonna save the starless version and I'm gonna save the stars version and I'm gonna open those up in Photoshop alright so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna there's a halo from one of the stars that didn't get removed obviously because it doesn't look like a star that's good enough alright and that all looks good these aren't stars here those are parts of the Andromeda Galaxy. Maybe run Gradient Exterminator again. Um, these guys. See if we can get the background like a little flatter. Maybe run it on fine and high. Alright, yeah. I'm digging that. And then as for the stars... Um, I was gonna check and see if there's any like real bad uh, chromatic aberration, but there really isn't. Like this, these blue and purple pixels here, that's like the worst of the chromatic aberration that I can see. It's really not bad. It looks really good actually, so I don't need to do anything with that. Alright, so open that up and pix inside again. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start doing some curve adjustments. So I'm gonna open up my curves transformation on the galaxy and I'm gonna start stretching it out and bringing out all this detail that's in here. Cause there's a lot, there is a lot that we can bring out. So you kinda just wanna stretch it out, but you don't wanna blow out the center of it. So I mean, I think that's looking pretty good there. I don't know if we can get it much further, because I definitely don't want to make the background look super ugly either. So I'm going to say, that's probably as good as we're going to get it. So next I'm going to use the curve adjustments again, but this time on the stars. And I'm just going to make them a little bit brighter. Not too much. But just a little bit. Alright. So now I'm going to change the uh, identifier for this as stars. And I'm going to change the identifier for this as starless. That way my recombined stars pixel math actually works because that's what it's named. And then we're just going to recombine them. So now that everything is recombined, we're going to run Blur Exterminator, which is going to really sharpen up all these dust lanes in here and bring out so much detail. And it's any stars, you know, that are like maybe a little bit misshapen or oblong, they're all going to get sharpened up also. So to do that, we'll just open Blur Exterminator and don't run it on automatic PSF, uncheck that. But we need to find this value, this PSF diameter. So to do that, we are just gonna extract our luminance from the image, and then we're gonna go to script, image analysis, and FWHM eccentricity, and then just hit measure. So we got 4.89. So that's the number we're gonna use, 4.89. And I'm going to turn the star halos up to 25, 0.25, and I'm going to turn sharpened stars up to 0.35. And I'm just going to leave sharpened non-stellar at 0.9. So let's run that and see how it looks. Alright, so Blur Exterminator's done. It might have overcooked it a little bit, so I'm going to turn this sharpened non-stellar down to... Uh, 0.6 and run it so that's done it looks great uh, it really sharpened up this uh, great star cloud in Andromeda uh, everything looks really good so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run noise exterminator um, I'm just probably gonna leave it on the default settings all right noise exterminator is done I mean there wasn't a whole lot of noise to begin with but you can see this graininess here before and then after it just makes it look way smoother so yeah that's looking very very nice as you can see we haven't really done a whole lot of stuff and we were able to make it look this good it's just because this is such a bright object it's a very large and fairly bright deep sky object one of the brightest deep sky objects other than uh, the Orion Nebula in the northern hemisphere yeah, it's looking really nice. I'm thinking maybe run um, a dark structure enhance. Turn it down to like 0.25, run that. Yeah, that just uh, made the dark lanes a little bit more prominent. Maybe run SCNR, remove the green, put it on like 0.5. Yeah, and that looks pretty nice. All right, so we got it open in Photoshop and I'm just gonna adjust the saturation from here and yeah that looks pretty nice so yeah there's the final image it's all done uh, looks really nice uh, four and a half hours of exposure time with just a uh, Sony mirrorless camera and a Sony telephoto lens uh, the only 
astrophotography gear that I used was the auto guider and the sky tracker, and that was it. No astronomy camera, no telescope. Literally just a regular photography camera and a regular telephoto lens. And that's that. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you enjoyed the image. And I'll catch you next time.